Okay, so today we are talking about lesson 10-2, which is the area of trapezoids. That's this one, trapezoids, rhombuses, or rhombi, and kites. <coughs> there are going to be two parts, excuse me. There are going to be two parts, as usual, um, for this lesson. The first part, we're going to look at um, kind of the finding the formulas and proving the formulas. And the second part, we'll be looking at specific examples. Okay, so the first part. Um, we're going to look at how to show this is true. In fact, I'm going to... It says down here that the proof will be later. Um, I may do it at the end if I, if I have time, but if not, then I'll do it as a separate video entirely. Um, but it's not really that important. The, there's a formula here. Um, the proof itself is not a fast one to do, so you're going to need to memorize the formula. Um, and that formula for the area of a trapezoid... So the area of trap, we'll say, is one half h b one plus b two. Okay, one half h b one plus b two. So what is it? We'll look at what this means. Okay, what this means. Well, first of all, b one and b two represent our bases. Okay, so again, remember a trapezoid has two bases, and the bases are specifically the sides that are parallel to each other. So I'm going to highlight them in pink here. We have one base up here, and the other base is down here. Okay, so we have two bases. We can call one of them B1, and we can call the other one B2. So here we have B1, which just means base 1. It's not B to the first power. It's, it's down below, so it's B1. Um, B sub 1 or B, we just call it B1 for short. Um, this other base we'll call B2. And those could flip. This top one could be B2 and this bottom one could be B1, it really doesn't matter, okay? But again, the key thing here, the bases are, are parallel, right? So these are parallel to each other, okay? So we have B1 and B2, so if I know the length of those, then those are just added up inside the parentheses here. So right here is where we add up B1 plus B2, okay? The height of this, again, remember, the height, if you watched the videos on... Um, the, area of, the area of parallelograms and triangles, um, the height is always perpendicular is always perpendicular to the base with those. But in this case, we have two bases, right? So we say the height is perpendicular to B1, and the height is also perpendicular to B2, which you could show that if it's perpendicular to one, it's perpendicular to the other, um, since they're parallel, um, which will, you know, I can leave that to your own thought if you're curious. Um, but let's look at this. So where would the height be in this case? A common error. A lot of students say that this side length here is the height because it looks like it's 90 degrees. But again, that's not good reasoning in geometry. Okay, You don't know if this is drawn to scale. You don't know if it's exactly 90, de 90 degrees. It could be 89.9 degrees. You can't see that difference with your eye. Right, so you need to see something distinct. So it's common from either of these two points here, from one of the corners, you'll see the height drawn. So I'm going to go from this one because I think it's easier to see. I'm going to start here. Again, the line for the height needs to be perpendicular. So it needs to come straight down, perpendicular to base 2, and it's also perpendicular to base 1. Okay, it's perpendicular to both. Now, it's most common to see it like this, where you just have it perpendicular to one. Because, again, if these are parallel, I'll just do this quickly. If these are parallel, and this is a transversal, right? Then you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, which means that alternate interior angles are congruent. And these two angles are alternate interior angles. So they must be congruent. Okay, so it's most common to see it written like this. So in this case, the height would be this value here. Okay, so it's kind of how we piece that together. Once you know these three values, you can find your area because those are the only three things we need to plug in to the actual formula. Okay, so that's kind of how that formula is used. Um, and again, part two, we'll look at specific examples. Okay, and we'll do the proof later. So let's look at a, you should hopefully know what type of shape this is. Um, first of all, <clears throat> All four sides are congruent, which means it must be um, a rhombus. 
Um, it's also a parallelogram, which is a rhombus is just a, a specific type of parallelogram. Right? So we have a rhombus in this case, which just means also all four sides are congruent. Now to find this, this is where this is a proof that, that I think is, is pretty straightforward, it's enjoyable. What I want you to do is I want you to draw the diagonals. Okay, so I want you to draw the diagonals of this rhombus. And if you remember, hopefully you remember this, characteristics of a rhombus, if you have um sorry about that. Someone just knocked on my door, so I lost where I was. So let's uh Let's get back to this. Okay, so we just drew the two diagonals. Right, okay, I got, I got it. I'm back on track. We just drew the two diagonals. And if you remember, the two diagonals in a rhombus are always perpendicular, right? So these are, all four of these would be right angles, okay? Uh, now, if I wanted to find the um, area... <coughs> of one of these triangles, let's say it's this triangle that I'm coloring in pink here. If I want to find the area of that triangle, what would I have to do? Well, we know the area of the triangle, the area of a triangle, is one-half base times height, right? So I'm just going to call this, you know, A, B, um, yeah, A and B. So in this case, it would be what? It'd be one-half AB. Right. Well, what about the triangle next to it? So let's let's deal with this triangle um, here. Well, what can you tell me about that triangle? Well, it's also a right triangle. So if I know, and we'll get to other things in a second about characteristics of a rhombus, but let's just call these C. We still know that this is B because it's the same line as the one before, right? So if I know that, then what? I can I can call this one half this is the yellow triangle, one-half of the base times the height, or BC. Okay? Now, what if I'm dealing with this triangle in green here? So, again, it's the same concept for all of these, right? So I'm going to call this value here D. <clears throat> so for the green triangle, I have one-half AD, right? Because the base is A. Here's, I mean, here's the base here, the base is A, the height is D, right? So I have one half AD plus, what color should I do here? Let's go with blue here. I have this triangle. This is a very pretty rhombus, isn't it? Fun colors. Um, I have that triangle in blue. How do I find the area of that triangle? Well, again, it's one half CD, right? The base times height. <clears throat> now, if I want to add these up, first of all, let's look at, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to factor out um, common, I'm going to factor out some terms. I'm going to factor out, first of all, a one-half, right? They all have a one-half in common, which means I can factor the one-half out, leaving me with one-half AB plus BC plus AD plus CD, right? We okay, we should be okay with that. I'm going to continue up here now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor by grouping. There's this thing called factor by grouping, which you should have learned in algebra, but I'll just do a quick review of it. I'm going to group these first two terms together and these last two terms together. And the reason I'm doing that is because in this first parentheses in blue, this parentheses here, I have a common term. I can factor out a B, right? So this leaves me with one half. I'll put this whole thing in brackets here. I can factor out a B, leaving me with A plus C. Right? In my second blue parentheses, what do I have in common there? I have a, I have a D in common, leaving me with, again, A plus C. Close your brackets. Now, again, this should be some algebra review. Since I have the same parentheses twice here, a plus c, a plus c, I can factor out an a plus c, okay? I can factor out an a plus c, meaning I'm going to be left with one-half a plus c times b plus d, okay? I can factor out a plus c, leaving me with one-half a plus c, b plus c. But what is a plus c? So looking back, um, looking back here, I'll erase some of this so you can see what a, b, c, and d were. So this was A, 
This was C. This was B. This was D. Okay. So what is A plus C? Well, A plus C is specifically looking at this side length here. A plus C is all along here, which is what? It's one of my diagonals. So I'm going to call that D1 or diagonal 1. And then if you look again, what's B plus D? Well, D is here. Add B to that. You just get what? Your other diagonal, right? You get your other diagonal. So really, you have B1, D1, which is the first diagonal, times D2, which is your second diagonal. And that is the area of a rhombus. So just to formalize here, A equals what? One half the product of the diagonals. Okay, one half the product. Now, if you forget this, if you forget this, if you're going through this and you, there's so many formulas to memorize in math, what if you forget? Well, it doesn't take that long. If you know the dimensions of any of your triangles, you can figure out each individual area. We can figure out the green area. We can figure out the pink area, the yellow area, and the blue area, and add them up, right? So it's not, I'm not saying you have to use this formula. Sorry, skip pages. I'm not saying you have to use this formula, but it's helpful, okay? It's very helpful. Um, anyway, we're going to move on. So we did a trapezoid, 1 half H, B1 plus B2. We did a rhombus, 1 half D1, D2. And we're going to do a kite. This is the last one for kind of showing the proof of it. Um, so again, the same, this, we're going to have the same strategy here. And the strategy, the same strategy as the rhombus is, at least, or the rhombi, which is we're first going to draw the diagonal, draw the other diagonal, and again, this should remind you of the other one, what can you tell me about the diagonals of a kite? They're always perpendicular, right? And if they're always perpendicular, then what can we do? We can use the exact same strategy. Let's call this A, B, C, and D. We can find the area of each triangle. So what I would say to do right now is pause this, see if you can figure out what the area is, um, you know, using kind of a similar strategy as we did back here, and see what you end up with, okay? Um, once you've paused it, which I'm assuming is now, you've see, either you got lost or you figured it out. I'll walk you through it. So, again, same strategy as before. We're going to deal with this top triangle first, okay? So we have the area is one-half AB plus, let's deal with this next triangle here. We have this triangle here. This gives us the area of that green triangle is one half BC plus one half. What's my next triangle? But let's go with the bottom left one. Okay, and it doesn't matter which order you do this in. You can go in any order you want with these. If I'm dealing with this triangle down here, I get plus one half A times D, and this last one, which will be will we use green yet? Can we do these green? Uh oh which we'll do in red. This last one will be 1 half CD, right? So plus 1 half CD. This should remind you exactly of the other one, right? We can factor out a 1 half, leaving us with, I'm going to put it in brackets, AB plus BC plus AD plus, whoops, CD. Again, I'm going to factor my first, I'm going to group my first two terms and my last two terms. What can I factor out of each of those? I get one half in brackets. I can factor out a B from the first term, leaving me with A plus C. And I can factor out a D from the second term, leaving me with A plus C. Again, I'll move over here because the doceri thing is in the way. Whenever I have the same parentheses appear twice, like I did last time, I can factor that out, leaving me with one half, again, stays in front. A plus C, B plus D. And again, just like before, A plus C is what? A plus C is one of my diagonals. So I get one half. Let's call it diagonal one. And B plus D is what? Well, B plus D, again, is my other diagonal. So I get D2. So to formalize, I get the area equals one half D1, D2, which is the same as we got for the rhombus. So the rhombus and the kite give you the same formula used in different ways. Okay, that should be it for today. 
If you have questions, you can leave a comment or ask in class. Bye, guys.